Marcia Langton, welcome to 7.30. Thank you, Sarah. This debate has now become highly politicised with the chance for the opposition to defeat an initiative the Prime Minister is so personally committed to. Was there ever a chance that Peter Dutton was going to help the government get this referendum passed? I doubt that uh, the shadow uh, leader of, of, uh, in opposition would be uh, capable of that. Uh, there are others who uh, were of a more reasonable bent. I am particularly surprised at uh, the way that um, Julian Le Lisa, the shadow minister for Indigenous Affairs, has twisted uh, history somewhat. In looking at what Peter Dutton has done, how do you rank this decision along with his decision to walk out on the apology to the stolen generations? At no time in our history uh, has Peter Dutton ever acted in a way that has, uh, you know, resulted in a, a measure that would close the gap on our disadvantages, uh, that would benefit us, that would enable Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to fully participate in Australian society. That's just not his track record. In fact, to the contrary, many of his decisions, including walking out rudely on the uh, apology to the stolen generations, rather typifies his history. And even though he much, much later apologised for that, one, of course, has the feeling uh, that he did so under pressure to rehabilitate his reputation. Let me, let me go to the, some of the detail that he's brought up in making this decision. He says that his decision to oppose the vo vo uh, voice to Parliament is based on his view that it is an elitist, and I quote, Canberra model, that it won't improve the lives of Indigenous Australians. Can you respond to that? He couldn't be further from the truth, and I, I deeply resent that deceitful opinion that he's expressed. Uh, Tom Calmer and I were co-chairs of the senior advisory uh, group on, in the voice co-design process appointed by Ken Wyatt, and uh, we chaired uh, uh, pr uh, meetings of 52 people, uh, including a national voice co-design group and a local and regional voice co-design group. Um, from all over the country, from rural and remote Australia and from the cities, from every state and territory. And uh, it was a collaborative effort. And a lot of people say that that was a government report. No, it was not. It is the report of the 52 people on that voice co-design um, committee. And we presented two reports to Ken Wyatt. He, he's explained this in public a number of times. He took the interim report to Cabinet, no comment. He took the final report to Cabinet, no comment. Let me ask you this. Mr Dutton also claims that the Solicitor General argued against the voice being able to make representations to executive government. It is central to the case that Mr Dutton is making. Is that correct? No, that is not correct. That is absolutely not correct. And uh, I, I'm really astonished that, you know, a member of the Australian Parliament would uh, be so deceitful uh, and propagate was what is essentially a lie. Why do you um, think? Why do you think he keeps saying it? Um, I, I think he thinks he can get away with lying, and he'll be thinking, "Oh, all these nice Australians will believe him, and they won't believe us." What's at the heart the, of that, Marcia Langton? Why do you think he holds that view? I, I think his opposition to the Voice relies absolutely on deceit. Um, and misrepresentations and, 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 I have to say, a great deal of ignorance. Um, and and he, uh, he wants to th sow confusion and doubt so that uh, the undecided uh, people and the people who are wavering because they're starting to think, yeah, I haven't seen any detail, uh, they think that he's able to, you know, swing them to a no vote to secure what he believes is his constituency. Let's be, get very clear on this issue of the Solicitor General because you are one of the few people as a member of the referendum working group, you're one of the few people to have seen and heard from the Solicitor General himself. Does the Solicitor General support the final wording for the referendum question? Well, I don't know the answer to that, but I know that the Attorney General does. And what happened was that the Solicitor General gave us a briefing on a particular set of words. Uh, and we, uh, I think, you know, to tell, 
to tell you maybe out of school some detail, a lot of us were very concerned about how we could convince our own uh, people, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, uh, that that form of words was not derogating from the power of the voice to give to make representations. When the Attorney General came back with a second set of words, it means pretty much the same thing that the Solicitor General said to us. Uh, we felt, yeah, well, um, that's landed in the right place in terms of being clear and comprehensible to anybody in the community, and uh, we, we would be able to absolutely defend it. And of course, what it re you know refers to is the power of the Parliament uh, to design the voice in legislation um, and, and, you know, should we be successful in the referendum, it will uh, become the subject of par a parliamentary committee and a design process. Um, Australians will be consulted and, uh, you know, parliamentarians will have their say, both in the House of Representatives and the Senate, on the design of the voice. Ken Wyatt, who, as you said, you worked with him very closely um, over a number of years. He resigned from the Liberal Party today. Do you understand what drove him to make that decision? Um, I, 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 I can't speak for him, but I imagine that, like me, he is... Uh, uh, he feels betrayed by the deceit about the voice co-design process and the recommendations. Marcia, I, I want to bring you back to, make a, to make, ask you a general question. Do you think that given Peter Dutton's uh, most recent intervention, do you think that without bipartisan support, the referendum can still succeed? I do, I do believe that. I do believe we can succeed because I, I, I think he's made a, a strategic error. You know, it's not 1994, 1995 when Pauline Hanson came out swinging with her ra racist nonsense about how she's entering Parliament only uh, to represent white Australians. She'll never represent Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians. She was in Tamworth the other night at one of the uh, No campaign events with uh, Barnaby Joyce, Alan Jones and Gary Johns. Uh, and saying things like, uh, I've been up north and spoken to the real Aborigines and they don't want the voice. And, and uh, there were many other racist things that said that night in Tamworth, all re now reported in the media, including the local, you know, New England newspapers. Well, uh, the local Gummeroy community are deeply offended by all of that, and so they should be. So you can see what's going on. Peter Dutton is playing the sleight of hand down here in the south, oh, it's the, you know, the voice is a Canberra uh, voice and the, the people involved are Aboriginal academics, which is absolutely not true. The 25 members come from all over the country. And what a vicious thing to say after one of them has just passed away. Uh, and he, you know, he was famously from Arnhem Land. Um, and then his, you know, special envoy for the no case, Pauline Hanson is up in Tamworth you know, spelling out uh, the, the real agenda, you know, the voice can only uh, be for the real Aborigines and they're never going to have a voice anyway uh, because uh, they're going to be represented by Jacinta Price. Uh, that's essentially the drift of what's going on here. Well, um, obviously there's a long way to go with this debate, but I appreciate you coming in today to talk, talk about it. Marcia Langton, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you, Sarah.